Hello everyone. In this video, we will talk about the various options we get up to set up SQL databases on Azure. So there are three options uh, available to you. The first one is Azure SQL database. The second is Azure SQL managed instance. The third one is your SQL server on Azure VMs. The first two are pass options and the third one is infrastructure as a service option. So now the question comes into our mind why we want to migrate our databases to Azure. Here are some of the benefits. So the SQL is automatically updated when it's hosted on pass. Microsoft manages the updates. There is no end of support. The backup, high availability, disaster recovery are all automated in pass options. You could also manage the cost. For example, with the IAS option, when you are not using the SQL database, you can turn off those uh, VMs where it's running. And for pass, you get all the administration uh, features as part of the cost. With pass options, you get four nines uh, SLA. With IAS option, you get 99.95% uh, uh, SLA guaranteed by Microsoft in a single VM. But, but if you set up multiple VMs, let's say in availability zones for SQL databases for IAS option, you get four nines SLA there as well. And it is also easy to migrate to cloud. You do get the benefits of uh, licenses. If you currently hold licenses on premises, you can still use them on Azure. We will see now what is Azure SQL Database and uh, SQL Managed Instance. Azure SQL Database and Managed Instance are PaaS services, which are fully managed by Microsoft. And it's a pay as you go model. So here you can easily scale up and scale down resources. B high availability is built in. You can also configure auto failover in secondary regions. In SQL database, you get two options. So first one is single database, wherein a database runs with its own set of dedicated resources. The second one is elastic pool, wherein you specify some resources and you can run a collection of databases on it. So it is cost effective as compared to single database, but you do not guarantee resources to a single database. A single database can be moved in and out of Elastic Pool. One of the use case for Elastic Pool could be that you have some databases which are not quite frequently used and they are free most of the time, then you can put them in Elastic Pool. There are three different purchase models for Azure SQL database. The DDU based one has three plans, basic, standard and premium. So a DTU is a, a unit which is a blend of uh, compute, memory and IO resources and it's available in all these three tiers. So for your SQL database, how many DTUs you, you need? So there are calculators available online and you can use them to find out how many DTUs your on-prem database would need after it migrates to Azure. So with the DTU model, you simply select DTU wherein it's a blend of compute memory and IO resources. Then came the vCore model. So the benefit of vCore based model is that if you have licenses on your on-premise SQL and you want to utilize the same licenses on Azure, then you can use the vCore based model. Another benefit of a DTU based model is that you are separately charged for compute and storage. So here in DTU, you simply select the DTUs and it will give you a fixed number of uh, compute and memory and IO resources. And it also has three models. The first one is general, which is for common workloads. The second one is hyperscale, automatically scales the storage up to how much you want. The third one is business critical, which is uh, similar to general, but it gives you a very low latency of accessing the database. So with general, I believe it would be around 10, 10 milliseconds at the maximum, but with business critical, it's around one to two milliseconds. Obviously, this would be more costlier than the general one. In the serverless model, you are built separately for compute and storage. So if you are not using compute, you are not charged. But during the inactivity period, you will only be charged for the storage and not for the compute. So let us see all these things in Azure console and we'll create an Azure SQL database. In Azure, you will search for Azure SQL database. You will specify a database name. So I will specify DB1 and then it will ask me to create a server. So the server name should be unique over internet. You will specify the login for the SQL server. 
here you get the option whether you want to use an elastic database or a single database so we saw these options here where you can select a single database and a elastic pool so i will use an elastic pool here and it will ask me to create an elastic pool so i will specify a name from here you will select the purchase model whether it's a ddu based or v core so here is the basic standard and premium ddu based model so in basic you can go up to 1600 ddu in standard uh, up to 3000 and in premium you can go to 4000 dtus then comes the v core based model so the first one is the general purpose and the second one is uh, business critical so for elastic pool you can select one of these so with general purpose uh, you can go up to 80 v cores and with business critical you can go up to 80 v core but the latency is 1 to 2 milliseconds and with general purpose is 2 to 10 milliseconds so if i change from elastic pool here to a single database in that case i will get other options wherein i can go for hyperscale as well or i can go for a serverless model wherein i select maximum v cores and minimum v cores and i do get the option to pause the database so this is uh, an auto pause delay wherein it can pause the database and you are not built for the compute resources at that time for our demo purposes we will go with the elastic pool and select the basic tier under networking we will leave it at no access and later on open the connectivity and so show you how to connect to the database it, I will create a sample database while the database is getting created let us talk about the other option which is a SQL managed instance this is the best option if you want to lift and shift your on-premise SQL instances to cloud using database migration service it is uh, fully compatible with the on-prem SQL and uh, you get most of the features which you get on-premise so if you have on-prem database and you want to move it to SQL then this is the best option if you have existing SQL licenses on-prem so you can set this SQL managed instance at a discounted rate it automatically provides a vnet support wherein the database is hosted in a vnet on a private ip address so your resources in that vnet or any other vnet can access that database using private ip address it also allows auto failover of databases in a secondary region so auto failover and geo replication is supported here just like azure sql database and it does not support a serverless model like we had in azure sql database also it does not support global vnet peering over basic load balancer so you would require a standard load balancer to support the global vnet peering the purchase model here is uh, only v core based and you get to choose either general purpose or business critical while creating it you get two options whether you want a proxy as the connection type or redirect so if you want your database to be accessible over internet then obviously you will have to go for a proxy model where the tcp connection is first made to proxy gateway and all the communication flows through it so there would be some latency the other option is a redirect model where the connectivity is directly made to the database and it doesn't suffer from latency issues so microsoft recommends using redirect model but if it has to be accessible over internet then you will have to select proxy model so our database has been created so here are our resources which have been created so this is my sql server under which i have this database db1 which i created and this is the elastic pool so once we go to our sql server under sql databases we can see what all databases are running into it and this is my elastic pool and if i click on it i can also configure it and change by tier so I can go to standard premium general purpose or business critical here I could create a failover group wherein all my databases could fail over automatically to a secondary region 
from here i can manage the backups of my databases here i can specify the access to the databases so i could set up the admin and who would have access to the databases so if i set admin here and specify my account now my this ad account has become admin on the databases here we see the dtu quota for our sql server and this is some basic information in my sql database under overview tab this is the name of my sql server so i'm going to copy it and using it i can connect to the sql server here we can set up geo replication where a secondary copy of our database would be created so that would be a readable copy and we will have to select a server in the secondary region these are the connection strings using this you can connect to the database using different programming languages so here is the sync group where you can sync the database to other databases so let us uh, connect to our database and see how it works so i have copied my server name so i will use sql management studio and connect to it but before i do that i need to go to my sql server and enable the access under security i will go to firewall and uh, virtual networks so when we created the database we selected no access so that means it is uh, not accessible from anywhere but we will have to allow the access from our client machine to connect to it here i will specify my ip address which would be my public ip so let me find that out below here you can specify the virtual networks from where you want the access to be enabled to this database also you can publish this database over a private link and it would be accessible over a private ip address so let me save this setting install sql management studio and show you how to connect to it so here i have the sql server management studio installed on my computer for which i allowed the access so this is my public ip from where i would be able to access the sql server hosted on azure so let us uh, try connecting it so i am able to connect from my machine as i allowed it on the firewall my public ip there are other options like advanced data security auditing failover group uh, tde which we will touch in our other videos this video was uh, all about showing you the options we have in Azure to set up our SQL databases. So we saw what is an Azure SQL database, what two deployment models it has, single or an elastic pool, the different purchasing models, DTU based, vCore based and the serverless uh, model. Under vCore based, we have three categories, general, hyperscale, business critical and under DTU based, we have three plans, basic, standard, premium. You can use calculators to find out how many DTU you, you need for your on-premise uh, databases. In under vCore based, you can use your Azure hybrid benefits. So you can use your on-prem licenses for SQL and uh, set them up as a vCore based SQL database in Azure. You can't do that in DTU based. Serverless model gives you the capability to automatically scale your compute resources and also it will not charge you and pause the database when the compute is not being used however you will be charged for the storage hyperscale is on demand scalable storage business critical is similar to general but the latency is one to two milliseconds then we saw sql managed instance we will do a demo of it later on it only supports vcore based uh, purchasing model and there are two tiers in it general purpose and business critical best use case for sql managed instance which is to lift and shift on-prem sql instances and microsoft recommend this i hope you like this video and i will create more uh, videos on sql features in azure later on please like and subscribe to my channel and i will see you in my other videos thank you